Live from Shadow Mirror Studios, it's the Talkie Box Podcast, Fly the Friendly Skies. I'm not sure if that applies. No, it does. I mean, Do we have they those... can fly the friendly skies. I just don't know how we can. Do you have one contribute. of those banners that like is off the tails of planes, like just your face and, <laughs> and that cucumber? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> or we can get a weather balloon uh-huh. and just attach a lucky fan to it. Okay. And <clears throat> see how far that fan goes. Yeah. A fan like a person. Oh, no, 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 no. Actually, like an actual, <laughs> like, electric fan. Okay. Really that bad. way it's, like, it's blowing and we can yeah. see yeah, how no, far, it. you know, it's like a, a, a motorboat. I actually in did the sky. think that we were talking about electric fans. <laughs> so I was like, what? But yeah, I was going to ask you, what's a lucky fan? <laughs> like, just one lucky fan. It's lucky because it gets to fly the friendly That's skies. True, yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, I'm your host, Dave. <laughs> And with me tonight is Justin. Hey, I'm back. And Jackie. Ow! Ooh. <laughs> Party. Ow. And uh, we haven't seen Justin in a little while. It's been a while. Yeah. Had some stuff going on. Mm-hmm. A lot of life happening. Yeah. Um, as it, as is its wont to do. Yeah, that happened. Uh, some life. So, took a little hiatus. I'm back mm. in action. Uh, and I brought literally nothing to the table. Awesome. But yeah. at least you're back in black. I am back in black. Yeah. These are my favorite shirts. Black uh, shirts? No, this is like a very specific shirt. And it's actually been like the source of some frustration for me lately. Okay. Expect. Because these are Hanes are most comfortable IQ stretchy shirts. Okay. So it's about $30 for a four pack. Right. And they're very comfortable and soft and stretchy. They're very stretchy. Yeah. And I was having the hardest time (laughs) finding them. I bought some on Amazon. And both Hanes and Amazon, not sponsors. But if they want to be, they can. Absolutely. We would love that. Um, And I bought some. Podcast at gmail.com. I bought some online. And I waited patiently for them to come in. And then they were supposed to arrive on a Wednesday. And I had to go to work. And they weren't at my apartment by the time I left work. Mm -hmm. Came back the next day. There they were. I opened them up. And they were plain-ass regular Hanes t-shirts. And I was so upset. Not the stretchy awesome. Not the stretchy awesome. Our most. It literally says on the tag. Plain-ass. Our most comfortable. You can't see it, but it says our most comfortable. (laughs) And it's true. Yeah. It's true. Okay. So I'm sending those back, and I just ended up going to Kohl's and buying... Buying a pack of shirts. Oh, so they have them at Kohl's? They do. Well, now it looks like you found out where to go. Yeah. I love Kohl's. Yep. Yeah. All right. I mean, and if you're ever interested, Dave, I'm Mystery telling you. Mystery solved. I'm telling you. The most comfortable shirts. Yeah, I was just do thinking. Do they have them in V-necks? They do have that them in V-necks. Yeah. Can we go to Kohl's sometime soon? Sure. Now, I, I will warn you. I enough today. These are probably the most expensive plain t-shirts you'll ever get. How much is it? Uh, well, the pack that I got, I actually got on sale, but it was a four pack, mm-hmm. um, and it retails at thirty six. That's a lot. But how long I'll do stress, they last? I mean, it's like nine dollars a shirt. Yeah. How long but have you had that shirt though? I've had this shirt probably for about a year. Mm. Um, but they last, and it, the comfort is just the main thing. Right. It's it's very light, so you get a, ni- a nice amount of like breathing. Mm-hmm. It's stretchy, so it's great for like an undershirt because you can tuck it in, or you can leave it untucked. Oh yeah, I mean that. J- just wait, till you wait. What? The stretch test right here. What? They're both kind of stretchy. They're yeah. both kind of stretchy, but no. this one does have a hole in it. Has that multiple, has multiple holes. In. This yeah, is, that one is wearing out in the back. I could see your shoulder blades through the back of your yeah. shirt. There's a hole in your armpit. There, there's, <laughs> there's like a long story to this shirt. When I Moved into this house a while back. It, w- it was like this house had like a revolving door on it of, of like roommates moving in and out for yep. a long time. And I remember the, those days. The very first time I did laundry there, I pulled my stuff out of the out of the dryer and this shirt was in there. It wasn't mine and it didn't belong to anyone who still lived in the house. Because I and don't so think have, Dave's <clears throat> even been to Michigan. No, I've, I've been to the Detroit airport once. I don't <laughs> think that counts but, for state hockey. But yeah, I've never <laughs> been to Michigan State hockey. I've never <laughs> seen a Michigan State hockey thing. And, and, you know. But it's one of the most comfortable shirts I own. It it is super thin now. It's it's been through hell and back, I'm sure. And uh, but I really 
It's super comfy. Yeah. Well, Especially like, in the in the dead of summer, you know, when it's just hot. This right here, I mean, it, it really it really does the trick. This yeah. could be the replacement for that shirt. And like mm. I, I've gotten to a point now where I find the things that I like, particularly when it comes to clothing mm. and like shoes and things like that, yeah. that I prefer. And I now I just don't stray from them at all. Unless it's a cool t-shirt that yeah. I like, I'm buying these. Yeah. Unless I mean, really, there's no other reason for me to buy any other socks than the socks that I buy. I buy the same Sanook shoes anytime these things wear out because they're Sanook? comfy and they slip on and they're, they're just, they're great. Okay. I'm all about comfort, man. When oh, I yeah. find the most comfortable thing at a reasonable price, it lock it in. Yeah. Lock it in. When I'm when I'm shopping clothes, I shop by touch mm -hmm. before look. I don't, I, I barely care what it looks like. I know. Um... <laughs> <laughs> As These as fine good. folks have seen your your outfits on Talkie Box for well over a year now. Yeah. No, you don't care. It's funny because I talked to my dad about taking you shopping and he was like, yeah, I get that. <laughs> <laughs> Man, you just came out of left field. Wow. What a All right. I mean, low just, blow today out of left field. No, it's just he was Yeah, just I like, get that. No, he was just like, I mean, the guy wears shirts, jeans, and converse. That's a classic look. I get it, but... Maybe you should help him find something that isn't one of those three items. I, mean, I wear I wear other stuff to like my day job and stuff. You know, but but I, like, I I can't fault you for that. Like that's a classic I, look. I wear black t shirts and jeans. Mm. That's what I wear. It yeah. makes my life very simple when it comes to deciding <laughs> what to wear. I wear black t shirts classic. and jeans. Yeah. Like I'm saying, I'm not, I have and nothing wrong with what you wear. Now I do have some cool graphic tees. Mm. I have a few cool button ups, but for the most part. I stick with this. Yep. Unless, hey, we're going out tonight. All right, I'll change out of the black shirt. I'll put on a graphic tee. And then we'll go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm, if I'm feeling extra, extra fancy, I'll just wear my gra my graphic tee. Then I'll throw a sports coat on over top. Whoa. Mm. Done. Sports coat? I don't, now all this, sports coat. I don't even know what that is. Is that like those? It's a suit jacket. Oh. A blazer. A blazer. Mm. Yes, sir. Well, mm -hmm. you know, depending on the material and the and the and, and, yeah. the, and, the, and the like. You could look really um, cool in a blazer. Yeah, I don't do that. Yeah. I mean, like uh, me and uh, Christina, my girlfriend, we went out to uh, New Orleans a couple mm -hmm. of weeks ago, and uh, we did this nice little. Uh, it was a steamboat cruise uh, dinner jazz thing. So mm -hmm. there was jazz playing the whole time. They had a dinner buffet, and it was just a nice little cruise uh, in New Orleans. And uh, I opted for it was a fancier affair. Mm -hmm. um, I had the choice between a whole suit, yeah, and jeans and shorts. I mean, in a, a t-shirt and shorts. And I elected to just wear jeans, a graphic tee, and I took my suit jacket and put it on over top. <laughs> and I felt fancy as fuck, guys. I'm gonna yeah. be honest. I felt I felt good. It's fun. I was walking around with my little Jameson and Ginger, like, hey, how's it going? How were, how <laughs> well, is your attire compared to other people there? Oh, we were definitely overdressed. Overdressed. We were. We were overdressed. Just because you had a coat on. Yeah. We like we we read everything about it. it's like smooth jazz cruise. Right. A nice uh, you know, like a nice ambiance of the dinner. Like we're looking at like the table setups on the pictures, mm -hmm. like, oh sh this looks fancy as fuck. I yeah. better bring my suit. Were you the one that was overdressed though, or was it like the combination of you and Christina? Because I feel like maybe if it was just you in your sports coat. Well, Cr Christina wore like a nice little black dress with a cool little uh, white design on it, mm -hmm. and then I wore my my jeans and a t-shirt, and then a black, uh, well, a, you know, a dark, yeah. dark, dark gray mm -hmm. sports coat. Um, and we just, how do I say? It? We just looked better than everybody else. <laughs> yeah, we we but looked, looked like, like we cared that. what we was looked there, like. Was there anyone in like? Tank top shorts and flip flops. Yes. Okay. Now, in their defense, uh -huh. it was typically around ninety to ninety five degrees right. the entire time we were there. So when we got on the boat, like it, it was into the twilight hours when we first got on the boat, it was hot. Yeah. I was not okay. Like I'm walking around with my jacket on and I'm just like, let's get another cold drink. <laughs> and I probably drank like three or four Jamesons and Gingers, just like hanging out at the bar, like it's air conditioned in here, huh? <laughs> yeah, it's nice. <laughs> Let's just chill out. Uh, and then it started cooling down a little bit, and we relaxed out mm. uh, on the on the deck to the jazz playing in the background, just the water passing by. It was really, really nice. And after those uh, Jamesons, I'm sure you were feeling mighty fine. Oh, I was feeling mighty fine yeah. most of the time. 
in uh, in in New Orleans, yeah. in New Orleans. New Orleans. Need to go yeah. so bad. New Orleans. New Orleans. It's yeah. it's a good time. I would say. I would caution um, that there are basically set tourist paths. Oh. Like there are places that tourists go. There are paths you take to get there. Um, and we were heavily advised, uh, and we took that ad- ad- advisement to heart mm-hmm. to not really stray from those paths. Okay. As a tourist, um, just because when you get after dark, after hours. Um, there's a lot of side streets. There's a lot of little alleys and stuff like that. And you have yeah. like the big street, like Bourbon Street mm-hmm. and right. Canal Street, and people are moving all across those. Um, but even in uh, on Bourbon Street, which is a really high traffic area, you get a lot of solicitation. Mm-hmm. Um, there, there are a lot of migrants um, hanging about. Uh, so there's uh, there's there's a lot of pressure. People following you around, asking you for money, things yeah, like that. Yeah. So. Uh, you kind of stick to those main By areas. Migrants? Did you mean vagrants? That's what I meant. Okay. I meant vagrants. Yeah, I, was I was like, not migrants. I don't think you meant to say migrants. I did not mean migrants. Migrants. <laughs> migrants. Viagrants. Is, migra- is that a thing? Migrant? Migrant? Yeah. Yes. Who move from place to place. Yeah. Like migrant workers. Yeah. Okay. Or immigrant yeah, because I was like, that sounds familiar, but I, I, yeah, I'll just I, say that I know what I he's misspoke. talking about. Yeah, mm. yeah. Um, Birds migrate. But it was a very good yes, time. It was a whole bunch of fun. Yeah. Um, for anyone who's planning a trip to New Orleans, if you guys plan a trip, there are a thing called hand grenades. These things are worth every penny. They're like $10. They come in a big old thing like this. Like a grenade at the bottom and one of those smooth shafts. All okay, the way like a up. like smooth a shaft. a yard. Are you about a dildo right now? I've heard I've heard it referred to like a, a whalebone or a yard. It's 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 just a drink. Yeah, yeah. It's just a big old drink, mm-hmm. but these they they make like a special melon drink. They call it the most powerful drink okay. in New Orleans, and they really get the trick done. And the reason they get the trick done may not be because of the alcohol content. But, They're um, just so refreshing and cool, okay. and you crush them, yeah. and they are very alcoholic, and yeah. you don't taste the alcohol at all, mm. at all. They just go down <laughs> super smooth, and they're, it's a delicious melon flavor. Yeah. I think me and Christina had like six or seven apiece the entire time we were that down there. Mm. Um, really cool, interesting city. Well, Maybe we'll go. Well worth, uh, <laughs> well worth the trip, um, and really... In the grand scheme of things, it wasn't terribly expensive. Yeah. Um, we did go out to a few fancy dinners, and we did like the boat cruise thing. Right. But if we had just, you know, gone there for a few days and taken in the city, it would have cost us more than six hundred bucks. See, I don't okay. need no fancy things. No, yeah. that's not including the hotel. Alcohol. Yeah. Yeah. Alcohol. <laughs> well, I do want to do um, like a couple of ghost tours or mm. something like that. We did check out the the Saint the the, the Saint Louis Cemetery is what it's called. Yeah, I think. That, that was I that's do that eerie. Too. Really. Yeah. They close at 3 p.m. Because you can't be there after dark. Yeah, the ghosts. Because there's ghosts. Oh. There's ghosts. What's the point of going before 3 if you don't get to see any ghosts? Um, to take I mean, pictures of the ghosts' break- houses. <sighs> but, um... The walls are literally made of coffins. Yeah. Oh. Like the brick walls that surround the cemetery, mm-hmm. when you go on the inside, they're tombs. Oh. It's like walls like six or seven feet wide. Yeah. Thick. Because there's bodies in them walls. Oh. I want to do that so bad. All right. Because, I don't know, it was really cool seeing when I went to France doing... We didn't get to do the catacombs because it was raining and my mom was like, Nah, let's go back to the hotel. Nah. Because I'm lame. Well, I mean, I know we've both seen... uh, I've done the... What is it? um, As Above, So Below? Mm Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, going to the catacombs of Paris sounds like a dangerous plan. No, you can. They have tours down there. You can go in there. Yeah. You just don't go like they were doing yeah. off path. Yeah. Don't go off path. You don't try to dig your way through tunnels like tunnels made of bones. Ma- yeah, exactly. <laughs> like you can go in there. People do it all the time. Mm. Um, Demons. No, normal people, tourists. We could have gone Who down there. Who wish to become demons? Vampires. Yes. Yeah. But yeah, it's so cool. Ooh, but I didn't get to go. Uh, we went to the graveyard that is above that area, though. Mm. And uh, I got to see Jim Morrison's grave. Is he buried in Paris? Yeah. I didn't know that. Very interesting. You don't get to go up to it anymore because it's covered in graffiti. Yeah. 
but still super cool. Assholes got to ruin everything. Right? They do. No, they have to ruin everything. Why is Yoshi here? Because I was hoping that if we talked about um, Jurassic Park, mm -hmm. he could be, you know, like, gaming version of Jurassic Park. I don't know. <laughs> Ew. Yoshi. Yoshi. Yeah. Yeah, we, we went and saw Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. Uh, How was it? Recently. I enjoyed it. As I said on the last episode that you weren't a part of. Yeah. Um, it uh, Refresh me. Yeah, it was a dinosaur movie. Oh. So I loved it. I like dinosaur movies. Yeah. I just got done actually marathoning all of the Jurassic Parks, mm -hmm. with the exception of Fallen Kingdom. Right. Um, which I want to see for only one reason. And the only reason I want to see... Fallen Kingdom is the same reason that I decided to do a Jurassic Park marathon. Dinosaurs. Jeff Goldblum. Jeff Goldblum. Just Jeff Goldblum is a national treasure. Just as important <laughs> as dinosaurs, in my opinion. He really... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> far far more important than uh, uh, dinosaurs, oh. in my opinion. Um, <laughs> You're doing an impression, too, apparently. Yeah, I'm not... It's not a good one. It's not a bad one, though. It's not... Yeah, we knew like, what you the, were doing. The cadence was on. Yeah, it was? Yeah. Oh, uh, well, uh... uh Good. I'm, I'm oh glad. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff. Stop. Mr. Oh, is it, isn't it, isn't, uh, isn't that uh, nice? <laughs> Great. All right. Yeah. Um, but no, I mean, I Jeff Goldblum has been, like, coming back out into the forefront. He oh, took, yeah. like, a little uh, hiatus. Mm -hmm. He was, you know, hibernating for a little bit, and now Jeff Goldblum is back. Yeah. And, like, swinging elbows. He's out there. And I love every minute of it. I do remember seeing him on Law and Order: Criminal Intent, which uh, he did a great job because he's Jeff Goldblum. And I think I think we've we've discussed before that Jeff Goldblum just shows up, and they give him like a prompt, and then he just does a scene, and they just write stuff around it. Yeah, I think I honestly think that's that how that's how it goes. Yeah, there's no way that any script writer is putting ums and uhs and things <laughs> like that into the script because they know they're working for Jeff Goldblum. Jeff Goldblum reads the line, so you're just going to bring back dinosaurs, and he says, so you're just going to uh, bring back uh, uh, di dinosaurs? Dinosaurs? You're going to bring back dinosaurs? Too much stutter on <laughs> <He> that. Just, <laughs> yeah, and it was a little bit too much. He makes it work, though. Yeah. I, I no, he does. Love I love it. Yeah. I love Jeff Goldblum. And there his... was something that he was in. There was another movie that had, what's his name? It had Jennifer Aniston in it, and I can't remember the other dude's name. Uh, also, the guy from Watchmen that plays uh, Owlman. Patrick Wilson. Has him in it, okay. uh, and then it also has Jeff Goldblum in it. Um, it's called Switched, I think, and it's hmm. about this guy who, like his friend that he has like a mega crush, mega crush on mega mega which that's another thing i want to talk about the megalodon but anyways this movie <laughs> <laughs> um so she's being inseminated oh she's gonna have her own baby because mm -hmm. was it happening so medically and sterile yes, okay yes. she was like, <laughs> she is being inseminated I, I didn't think i didn't know if you were like masking it, like so she's sex. going to bone town <laughs> <No>. <laughs> But anyways, she's doing that, and there is, um, I don't know why they decided to do this, but they had a fertility party before this happened. Mm -hmm. So, like, at the fertility party, they have the sample of the semen uh, in, like, one of the bathrooms, and he spills it, and then oh. replaces it with his own sample. Jason Bateman. Yeah. Oh, Jason Bateman. One. Okay, yeah. But yep, he's yep, in yep. that. Jo Jeff Goldblum's in that, playing a very small side part, but still. Okay. I, that was the first movie that I had seen him in that was recent. Okay. Was well, he's also in Thor Ragnarok. He is in yeah. Thor Ragnarok. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He was in a, a, an episode, at least one episode of Portlandia. Did you see the Jeff Goldblum episode? I haven't episode? seen Portlandia. I've, I know it's on Netflix and I need to watch it, but I, haven't, I just haven't. There yet. are so many shows we're watching right now. There's yeah. a lot of shows. Me and Christina just finished The Office. Yeah. I had seen it before. I think I've seen most of it. I don't think I ever finished it. Well, here's the thing about The Office, and this is my honest to God opinion, and I don't know, I'm, I'm getting a vibe from Jackie that she might feel this way too. It will likely, mm -hmm. most likely, go down as one of the best television shows in history. Oh, yeah. Like, it is... You hear that, Game of Thrones? Someone's coming for you. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, The Office already done did it. The Office <laughs> did it. Definitely one of the best sitcoms there's, there's ever been. Yeah. Uh, I'd put it up there with Parks and Rec. I think both of those shows are really, really good. I have mm -hmm. seen all of Parks and Rec. I, I love that show. I just learned today that the character Moe's 
is actually the executive producer of Parks and Rec. I did not know that. That mm-hmm. it that. just makes yeah. Me, he was he was the head writer on The Office. It makes me yeah oh, that really? too. Mm-hmm. That just makes oh. me laugh because he never really has any lines. He just yeah. does weird shit and leaves. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, that's what I would do as a writer too. I would just like write myself in like comes in, scares everybody and leaves like <laughs> <laughs> like that little awkward run yeah. he does. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. No, I mean, now I'm trying to convince Christina to jump on the Parks and Rec train. Mm-hmm. She's a little hesitant right now. I get it. She's just coming off a big loss. Oh, you have yeah. to give her a sec. I yeah, she just got done watching the entirety of The Office. Mm-hmm. She didn't know Michael Scott was going to leave at one point. So yeah. when we got to the episode, wait, and she's like, wait. Did you know that happened? Yes, I knew okay. it. It's happened a long time <laughs> ago. She's like, wait. He's not really leaving, is he? I'm like, hmm. She's like, He's not really leaving, is he? I'm like... Yeah, babe. She's leaving. She's like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> like, it took it took a little bit of goading to get into the the episodes following that. Like, no, but seriously, yeah. he's really gone. Yeah, yeah. It's like when Jonathan yeah, Taylor is. Thomas left uh, Home Improvement. Is it though? Uh, kind of, because that show actually tanked after that. It did. <laughs> but I don't know if Jonathan Taylor Thomas was as pivotal to that show. Apparently, he was. I mean, yeah, maybe. which character was that? Was that the best friend? No, that was the child. One no, of the was, children. That was oh. the the oldest, middle or the middle boy. The middle boy. Yeah. Why did he leave? He went. I think he went to go to college. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> like I'm show? done doing the show. I'm gonna go go to college and like take a step back from acting. Yeah. Is what he did. Hmm. So that's good cool. Stuff. That's smart. Yeah. Parks and Rec is great, and I I was hesitant about Parks and Rec because up to that point. I never really liked Amy Poehler all that much. Neither did I. And yep. then, and then I watched it, and and she just started growing on me and growing mm-hmm. on me. And Up then, until that point, I found her to be like really abrasive, almost. Yeah. Like I would just watch her and be like, she was just like too aggressive, too over the top at mm-hmm. points. And I just, I didn't really like the characters that she was typically cast right. as because she was typically cast as like that bitch character or <laughs> something like that. Like she, yeah, she she really was. Um, and uh, yeah, I grew. She grew on me too. And I think one of the most difficult things about Parks and Rec and Office and convincing people to watch them is that the first seasons on both right. of those shows yeah. don't do them any justice right. whatsoever. Like that's those bo- are both shows are great examples of a show like maturing and the characters coming into their own and becoming a much much better show, much yeah. better writing after the first few seasons. That's what I like about the shows too, though, is that like. You're growing. You you feel like almost you're growing with them and how you're liking them. Yeah. Like mm. because of like I started watching The Office. And it took me a while. I was like, I'll just keep with it. Everybody tells me it's great, and that's how I am right now at Parks because I'm just starting watching Parks and Rec. So I'm <sighs> in the first season. I think I'm on like episode eight. Mm. I'm like. Leslie want, Nope gets so much better. Yeah. Like, I'm like, I really want to just get to the part where we have Chris Pratt as a regular character. <laughs> yeah. I don't want it guest starring anymore. And that's the point, like, the, what I really like about Parks and Rec, and I like it, and, and, and I liked it more than The Office, was that I found that I liked every single character on that show. Um, every, every one of the regular characters, I was, I really enjoyed. You get, you get a lot yeah. more, you got to get, you get them a little more fleshed out, like, you get those characters in the office, but you don't get all of them completely. Like mm. Phyllis and Stanley yeah. and Creed. Like they all have their little parts, but you right. don't really get these characters completely fleshed out. Whereas in Parks and Rec, like even Jerry gets a few episodes in oh, there yeah. where or Gary. Or Larry. Or Larry. <laughs> or Mary. Or Larry Gary Gurgich. <laughs> um but like you you get all of these characters really fleshed out. They all get their own storylines and arcs. And uh, they I just think it was a phenomenal show. Oh, yeah. Just about start to finish. And I think the two things that like both the first seasons of The Office and Parks and Rec have in common is that the lead characters are just incredibly awkward mm-hmm. and like difficult to empathize with yeah. during the first like few episodes, first few se- uh, the first season because you just this is like the most awkward human being yeah, I've ever like, seen. Like so watching the first, so ridiculous. The first season of The Office is cringeworthy. Mm-hmm. Like you're watching, and like I just feel embarrassed for every person like involved. I'm like, oh no! Yeah. Like you get so like it almost put me off. Like it, the first time I tried to watch The Office, I was put off. <laughs> I watched like the first like four or five episodes. I'm like, I can't watch this. Yeah, I mm-hmm. can't. And I I didn't watch it. And then when I came back to it, I actually started. The second season, mm-hmm. didn't watch the first, started the second, 
watched it all the way through and finished it, went back and watched the first season and watched it all the way through again. Okay. Yeah. But as people that have actually seen Parks and Rec, when you go to see the new Jurassic Park movies, do you just think like, oh, well, it's great that... It's Andy, right? Andy. It's great that Andy's doing this now. Like, no, you know, do you still I, you see know, him as Andy, or I do feel you see like, him as a separate character? No, you, I see Chris Pratt as Chris Pratt now. So, like, I see Star Lord as a separate character. I see Owen Grady as a separate character. I see Andy Dwyer as a separate character. Mm-hmm. Andy Dwyer is my favorite character that he's ever done, mm-hmm. just because like he is just so much fun. He's fun loving. He's just a goofball. He says the most ridiculous shit in the world. Yeah. Yeah. And like just looking at outtakes, it looks like he had a whole bunch of fun playing that character. Oh, yeah. Like he I said some like, pretty ridiculous shit. I feel like Star Lord is right in the middle of Owen and Andy. Like Owen is the is the very macho guy. Mm-hmm. He's still got some funny to him, but he's just this really like I gotta get shit done. I is felt Owen, like he was probably more comedic Jurassic in the Jurassic World. Jurassic I feel like he got more comedic in the second one just based on the trailers than the first one. In the first one I got yeah. a very like one hundred percent action hero guy. Kinda yeah. But then there was like a, a scene in the trailer of Jurassic World, which I have not seen yet. Where he's like running down a mountain, he's like, Wah! and it's just it seems yeah. very goofy the way he's like flailing his arms. I'm like, okay, so now they're gonna try and bring a little right. comedy relief there's into a, him there's as There's another well. clip that, that I've also seen in the trailer that happened in the movie where he like he's about to go off and do something. And he turns to the girl, and he's like, hey, if I don't make it back, just know you made me come here. <laughs> and he really like walks funny. up. Yeah, like he um. When I was watching the movie, I was like, I was pointing out characters that reminded me specifically of our roommates, and I was like, "That's Jarrett, that's our landlord, Jarrett." Oh my yeah. god! <laughs> like if just if Owen had like a shit ton of knives, it would be perfect. <laughs> and then yeah. um, a shit ton of knives. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna see a character. Jarrett, that's your defining quality. It kind of is. <laughs> Do you know how many knives we have? <laughs> He carries a scalpel everywhere. He does. Yeah, titanium scalpel. Um, there's something that's been on my mind a lot lately, and it has nothing to do with anything we talk about, but it's the rapist... Um, Brock Turner? Brock, Tur- Brock Turner. Brock Turner. Who is now... And I'm sorry to, like... This just came to this region hall, but it's just popped in my mind. The rapist Brock Turner is appealing his his conviction. Yes. And it pisses me off. Yeah. yeah. I actually, I, I, I noticed what you did there that a lot of other pe- people and outlets aren't doing, which I appreciate that you mm-hmm. did, and that is that you referenced him as the rapist. Yeah, the rapist Brock Turner. And not the other thing that he used to do, that it doesn't really matter that he used to do it because right. he started doing another thing, yeah, which was rapist. raping people. Yeah. Um, but now apparently he's saying like, oh, my pants were still on. I wasn't trying to have intercourse. I was trying to have outer course, which is something that was made up. For the rapist Brock Turner uh, Still to appeal his sense. conviction, <laughs> um, and it's and it irritates me. Not and and I get like he raped somebody and he and and he doesn't want to be known for that. I understand that if I had raped somebody, I probably wouldn't want people to, like to know that about me either. But, but he raped uh, somebody and he's a rapist. But his lawyer, who I understand had to defend him in his initial case, should now be like. No rapist. Nah, bruh. We're not doing this shit. No. I just don't understand, like, outer course. Like, I still feel like if someone is humping me, yeah. just, and I do not want it, still fucked. It's yeah. just fucking weird. Still it, like, it, want to press some charges against it's you. It's unwanted <laughs> sexual contact. It yeah. doesn't matter if you're dry humping or whatever else. It's still unwanted sexual yeah. contact. Like, and I, is, that's, that's I'm right. not even sure if his conviction was technically rape. I think it was, like, I think it was sexual assault. I might be wrong in that, but he's a rapist, so fuck him. Mm. Or don't. Um, you're prerogative. Yeah, don't. Don't do that ever. Unless you're in prison with him. In fact, let him know, know he's a rapist. For it. <laughs> um, yeah, like then one, by all means, he was, hide in the cucumber. He, he, was, he was sentenced to six months. He did three. Like, I'd say he got off pretty fucking light for being a rapist. And then he's going to try this, like, I want to appeal it and not have to be registered as a sex offender even though I'm a rapist. Um, it, it's pretty crazy. It's disgusting. Yeah, it is. So, hey, if you're thinking about raping somebody, don't. Don't. We'll call you out on the show. I will. Nope. Mm-hmm. We can we can have like a running fuck you 
you're on the list board. Yeah. Every time we hear about a rapist, we could just put it up there. But like, hey, we did. We did start doing asshole of the week, and I think rapist Brock Turner is going to be the asshole of the week every week. Ding 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 ding. ding. <laughs> Does anybody have an asshole of the week? Do we do that only at the end of the show? Uh, we did it once because like we had some assholes to talk about. Yeah, but, there were assholes. But uh, <laughs> we might add on to the list of assholes of the week, but Ra- Rapist Brock Turner is going to be on there every week, I think. I like it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I like it. I like it a lot. So, sorry to do that, bring that to a screeching halt, but... Skrrr... You know who's not on the asshole of the week list, in who's my it? opinion? Chris Pratt. I love him. <laughs> Chris Pratt is fantastic as far as I know. Uh, oh, yeah. Love to have you on the show. Yeah, come on over. Or just anytime. Just get, get into that Parks and Recreation. It is good, good yeah, shit. Yeah, absolutely. Good shit. So. Any other good television shows you've been uh, perusing and enjoying recently? Um, We've been watching Bravest Warriors. Yep. Which is, uh, it's on... We watch it on YouTube. He's been most. watching. I I've, already... She's already seen it. Yeah. Okay. Um, but it's a fantastic cartoon, much in the vein of, like, Adventure Time. Okay. Um, but I feel like the dialogue is just... Um, it's not only just more mature, but it's also, like, like every single phrase on that show is funny. Every oh, sentence yeah. that comes out. Like, sometimes with Adventure Time, they just make a noise, and you're just supposed to be like, ha Okay. But no... <laughs> But sometimes the shit they say is just like there is a a doll that they had in one episode, and it was um was it that that pooping disease the thing that dysentery oh yeah, just... Dis- princess dysentery and like <laughs> when you pressed her little speak button it went I have frequent urges to defecate like oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Like it's, I it's, have frequent urges to defecate. Yeah, and then, uh, it's so well written, and the voice cast is fantastic because, mm-hmm. like, I don't know who does the main voices, but I've heard voices from Doctor Tran. I've heard Master Shake's voice on there, um, and, and several others that I recognize that I can't place at the moment. But I'm like, pretty sure almost all of the like I've seen them do other things mm-hmm. like in commercials and stuff, but I'm pretty sure all of them are just like the main characters are new, like really? new to the. Or at least, like, that's their yeah. starring moment. Because I've looked them up, and, like, I can see, like, okay, they were in this commercial, or they were doing this, but, it's, like, that yeah. is a, what I think they're going to be famous for. And I feel we're kind of late to the game on this show, because it's actually, or, I mean, you've been watching it for a while, but it's on season, it's already had four seasons. It's Bravest Warriors. Bravest Warriors. If you have, um, I know that on YouTube they have the first two, maybe three seasons available but after they were doing it on youtube they decided let's get some money from this and put it on uh the app verb verb vrv verb yeah vrv and uh Vr. it yeah. what i have is a subscription to them for ten dollars a month and i get that i get um who is it rooster teeth no it's rooster uh, teeth is on there rooster teeth's on there Crunchyroll, uh, funimation and i think Cartoon Hangover is the ones that produce Crunchyroll that. and... Um, Funimation. And Funimation are like, they have channels on there? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's pretty I, cool. I believe Verve is made by Crunchyroll. It is made by Crunchyroll. Um, and but so you, get like, an, you get you get you get a Funimation get, channel on yeah. there. Yeah. I enjoy Funimation. It's yeah. really cool. They have a lot of anime Because sometimes I don't like watching an anime with the Japanese. Sometimes I'm like, you know, I really appreciate appreciate the um the, dub? the dubbed version because sometimes they can do be really good. I really appreciate the dubbed version. I think one of the one of the issues I've had with like uh some things being uh subtitles and some things being dubbed is sometimes the characters sound completely different. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like you'll have a character in the the English version who talks like this, and he has a very specific thing that he's saying to you, but then you hear the same character in Japanese like, I go! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so true. Good yeah! <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, specifically, I feel like Attack on Titan is a good example of how yeah. I prefer the Japanese version over the anime. Like, because... Over the su- the dub version. Or the... the dub, yeah, blah, blah, yeah. blah. Yeah. I prefer subtitles versus dub with uh, Attack on Titan because I think, whatchamacallit, uh, Araman that character he has a deep voice in the english dub and then in the other one it's totally different this is the light voice i'm a flute yeah. <laughs> i think i think a good example of one that i have not seen an english dub for mm. but i would i prefer 
the Japanese version is One Punch Man. Oh, yeah. One Punch Man I... and Kill la Kill are Ooh. both better in Japanese. I agree. Because of, like... The they they go on these long too. they go on these long weird rants where they're basically just like going through this super description or they're 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 cheesing them like this is our super duper something something system with it da 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 and has this and has that has this yeah and in English it sounds like somebody's prattling on but in Japanese it sounds like this like, over the top like oh look at <laughs> like they just it's very very energetic and there's a lot of pop and just energy there yeah. like and it's a lot of fun <laughs> it's a lot of fun yeah like uh what's what's his name in in kill a kill have you watched kill a kill yeah but it's been a while i'm not gonna remember the names i don't remember the guy's name but uh Is it the, the real guy? the real real big bulky guy yeah. in the japanese version when you're hearing this guy talk and he's like, like yelling at people. It's intimidating. It's intimid. It's really, really intense because it is loud and it is deep and it's raspy, but also very fast and well enunciated. Mm. And then in the English version, it's that classical big dumb guy voice. What do you think you're doing? And it just, he loses so much right. from Japanese to English because he's not he's not intimidating. Like he's just. Yeah. Dumb. Yeah. There, 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 there's definitely some out there that I prefer the dub on, though. Mm-hmm. Many that I prefer the dub on. I'm trying to think of one that I prefer the dub over the English. Or the, okay, Jackie, just saying the same thing. The dub over the subtitles. Mostly, I think, usually I prefer the subs. Also because um, it takes a lot from, for the Japanese to be translated, not only to text so we can read it, but from there they do text and then then English, so yeah. then it matches the lips. Like, a lot of stuff gets missed. So I feel like with the levels that you have to go through for a dub, you don't, you lose a lot. But with yeah. a sub, you can at least read it and be like, I feel this like is the full context. Some, sometimes you do lose, lose some things. Sometimes they just phrase it differently. But I'm also a type of guy that, like, I watch shows with subtitles on regardless. Whether yeah. or not I understand the language, <laughs> I still like subtitles. Mm-hmm. Um, because I'm not great at hearing anymore yeah um <laughs> yeah i'm the same way uh like my, my hearing's not as good as it used to be um it didn't help that i almost cut my ear off at one point right um but uh not only that but sometimes i just i don't quite understand what they're saying and i like to just like look at it and know i yeah. get a little extra reading in for the day that's nice sure. helps me associate characters when i can actually like read the character's name and i'm like that's that character. Like mm. I can yeah. now associate with that character a little bit better, and understand where they where yeah. they fall and everything. Yeah. Um, because I think I feel like Tokyo Ghoul is a good example where the dub is not as good as the subtitles. It's not. not it's not. Because you do you do lose a lot, and it's it's tough when you're when you're yeah. translating from a different language anyway. Because there's a lot of nuance in Japanese that, that you don't we get. we just don't get like right. all these different jokes and stuff that. We don't understand. All we can really do is read the script or hear what the American actor said to make it fit the lip sync. Because right. that's one of the that's why uh, anime voiceovers it always has that very like that cliched choppy like speak like cadence that they have in a lot of animes where you know it's very easy to replicate. Like this is what an anime voice is like. It's because all they have to like they have to sync up right. and watch the show as they're doing it, where nobody else ever has to do that. <laughs> I gotta make this yeah. lip flap right. No, <laughs> nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, going back to the the subtitles, like I I try to watch subtitles on everything because I've been losing my hearing since I was you know in my early twenties when I started going to a lot of concerts and stuff. And uh, playing, playing rock bands. yeah, and then um, slapping, the but bands. also like I often have a fan going when I'm in when I'm in bed, like mm-hmm. watching TV, and so um, you want the pen? Oh, I wanted to hold your hand. Oh, um, <laughs> <laughs> like we yeah, often have, have a fan too. going when we're in bed, and and like trying to watch TV over the fan. I don't want to turn it up too much because we have roommates. And I don't want to wake anybody up. Um, so having the subtitles is always really helpful for me. Yeah, I don't know. I've always been a subtitle kind of guy, and uh, I got made fun of it 
for a, a little while, like, why do you need subtitles on, man? Why do you need subtitles on, man? I love subtitles. And now I'm, um, like, with my girlfriend, and, like, when we started dating months and months and months ago, like, we were watching TV yeah. one day, and the subtitles were on, and I'm like, do you prefer the subtitles? Or do you? And she's like, yeah, I do prefer the subtitles. I'm like... <laughs> Perfect. Me too. Yeah. Me too. I, I remember when, uh, when I first started doing it, it was back... I was... It was years ago living with, with uh, the same house where I got the shirt. Um, and one of the guys that... I released you. Thanks. I released you. One of the guys that I was living with <laughs> did that a lot. Like, he would have the subtitles on. And I always thought it was weird until I found myself, like, actively reading the subtitles all the time. Mm -hmm. And then, like, we went to going, like, in a different room watching something else. And I was like, what? What are they saying? What the hell? <laughs> I miss that. I I'm going to need some subtitles on here. Yeah, they, they do yeah. a lot. The only frustrating thing is, is when you're watching an English dub mm. of an anime and you want subtitles on, yeah. you're not getting the English dub subtitles. It's you're the getting the Japanese translation that. subtitles where I hear something that they say and then I look at the subtitle to confirm it. it and I'm like, that says sense. a completely different yeah. fucking thing. Like, what, what just like, happened? I, I actually watched uh, an anime called Captain Harlock. Yes, um, great, great anime, and and I, I was really enjoying it, but I, but it was the same thing. I had the subtitles on; it was dubbed in English, and I was like, "That's not what they're saying." Nope, they said something I, completely different. Yeah, this is very strange to me. And then you can you can kind of see where some of the translators like take liberties, where they pull a detail out or mm -hmm. uh, here and there, or they just change exactly what they said, even though it still works. And if you had yeah. the subtitles off, you would never notice that there was like something missing. But when you see the subtitles. And you hear what they're saying, you're like you're, you're cutting shit out, yeah. Or you're you're changing the com you're changing the tone of what that right. guy said, just by chopping out a few words. You've just completely changed their tone. And there's something that uh, Jarrett was watching one time. He was telling me about, and it I don't remember if it was an anime or it, it may have actually been like the the three percent or something like that. Okay, um, something that was that was definitely like they had it subbed and dubbed. And he said at one point there was a scene where the sub and the dub were complete opposites of what of each other. Oh no! And so it's like this person just said something, and the dubs and, and the sub says they say like something completely opposite to that, and it completely changes what's going on in the scene. Like the subtitle says, "I'm gonna kill you," but in the English, it's like, "I'm gonna kiss you." Like, like no, something, yeah, like, <laughs> "Hey, do you want to do this thing?" And it was like, "Yes, no." Like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna run home real quick and take a shower. I'm going to go kill a homeless person. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, there's definitely times where, obviously, it does not work out the way it yeah. should. But that's what that's what we get for watching anime, you know? I guess. That's Craving content get. from another continent. Yeah. Ooh, I like that. I like that, I too. I like that. Yeah. Um, write that down. Somebody hey. write that down. Craving content from another continent. Somebody write it down. That's trademark. Hashtag, trademark. Hashtag content from another continent. No, Copyright. Yeah. But, uh, Verve, if you would like to sponsor, Verve. Yeah. since you're a new upcoming thing that not everybody has. That's true. Verve. Verve. Oh, my Netflix hasn't been working right. Oh, no. I actually, my Netflix got hacked. Is that why I Is don't have Netflix on my phone anymore? I just never, yeah, like, I had to yeah. change the, I had to change stuff. Yeah. Uh, the other night I went to, I went to turn on Netflix and it was not working and I was like, well, I was, this is on my Xbox. And I was like, I went to my laptop. I'm like, I'll log in over here. And it's like, that's not right. That's not the right email address or password. I'm like, the hell it's not. Mm -hmm. And it turns out someone had hacked it, changed the email address, and it was someone in Tunisia. Um, and so I had to go and, like, I, I was able to, to change it and get the email address based. New password. I checked my PayPal, make sure nothing got messed up there. Mm -hmm. And I don't know why anyone want, would want to hack a Netflix account. Like, I mean, it's not a lot of money. It's but not. see, you know, like that—that's weird because I was opening up my profile on Netflix a couple of days ago, and there were like a few titles that were in my continue playing queue mm -hmm. that, that I watch. did not watch. Mm. I'm trying to think. And everybody else has their own profile, so it wouldn't make any sense for somebody to go in here into my profile and well, watch I can see that happening sometimes where you just click on the like. You happen to click on the wrong one, and so or like maybe but. you just don't want a whole bunch of like House Hunters like shows showing up on your thing, but you yeah. want to watch House Hunters. Yeah, so you just go to another profile and watch House Hunters. Is let that them what it was? Deal with was the it House Hunters? No, oh. all this other random stuff. I don't even remember what it was. <laughs> I'm trying to think, like, 
I don't know really how it works, but I know certain Netflixes of different countries, mm. you can watch certain content. And I don't know if it, like, specifically has you, like, if you were to move to another location, would the Netflix account just register you still as a U.S. Like, I don't person? Know. Like, how does that work? Like, I mean, maybe, I think, I don't know. That's, that's a good maybe question. Maybe if they're in Indonesia, they're like, fuck, I want to watch The Office, but I don't have it in my country. So, yeah. hack into American Dude's account. I guess, maybe. Well, she's got you there. Yeah, that could be it. Now, see, like, it, like we've talked Sorry, about this Tunisia, before. Sorry, Tunisia, dude. If you, if, ours. <laughs> if you find like there are like gateway titles out there mm-hmm. that can open up other channels for we've you. Talked about that, like, yeah. like, we, we've talked about this. Like I one time watched um, a show, not, not a show, it was a movie that was a Japanese movie, mm-hmm. like live action Japanese mm-hmm. um, with English and Japanese subtitles, blah, 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 blah. When I watched that, all of a sudden I had this whole row on my Netflix because you watched such yeah. and such and like. Tons of different Japanese like television dramas mm-hmm. and sitcoms and just romance movies and, and shows where it's like live action Japanese programming yeah. that or I Korean. would not have at. No, it's Japanese. I know there's, yeah, but I was thinking like, or Korean dramas. You could find some K pop with some K dramas. K dramas are cool. K dramas. Mm. K dramas very dramatic. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and Korean. Dramatic with a K. Yeah. Capital K. Okay. Mm-hmm. You get it. Yeah, I get it. You get it. We have a, a cucumber on the table. Yeah, um, when I first saw it, uh, Kate That's showed it to not me. not in the shot, by the way. Uh, Kate yeah. showed it to me. <laughs> okay. I was, yeah. uh, there we go. I was convinced it was the Hulk's penis. Yeah. And uh, she told me it wasn't, that mm-hmm. this uh, cucumber has a name. Oh, yeah. Oh, does it? Yeah, she named it today. I don't remember what its name is. I don't remember either. All but right. there's another cucumber around here named Pippa. I know that. Really? Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and this guy has a, a little face on him here. He's a little vampire. A little vampire cucumber that just so happens to look like the Hulk's in, engorged penis. Yeah. There's a, a fun story about this. There's a story I, about this. I think, <laughs> I think they would love to hear the story, Jack. So... Okay, so... <laughs> Dave's face. So this cucumber uh, was actually... There's Kate's, nothing in here. Uh, Kate was the one that... Uh, she was going to pay... Which is a weird thing to start the story off. She was going to make a car payment. <laughs> and the guy that um, she was making the car payment to, he has a cucumber garden. He grew a shit ton. Doesn't have, like, a need for them unless yeah. he sells them to a spa to make cucumber slices. Like, I don't know what you would do with a bunch of cucumbers, and neither did he. Yeah. So he just started giving them away. Uh, and Kate was offered a cucumber. She didn't take it immediately until she found this one that looks just like a penis. Um, yeah. And then she didn't have a use for it. Like, she was just going to hand it to me and that be the joke. But I was like, No. Kate. There's more to it. I have a, I have a great plan. <laughs> this is going to be fantastic. Yeah. So I've been convincing Dave for a while. Well, uh, I've been playing and messing around with Dave, saying that I wanted to reverse roles sometime. Like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> David takes the awkward, awkward breath. <laughs> <sighs> All right, keep yeah. going. Uh, like the, I just joke around because I like his reactions, like that just now, or the <laughs> the dramatic no. Like it's just fun to hear someone reject you over and over again. Putting things up Dave's butt is what she's talking about. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, I came home uh, after work having the cucumber in my possession. He did not know this at the time, and I was like, Dave, uh, you know how I've been joking about that. Well, now I'm kind of being serious and. I found something. And at first he was like, oh, did you order something online? And I was like, yes. <laughs> I ordered something online. It should arrive in a few days. You lied to my face. And then right like, to your beautiful face. And then he said, is it going to go in my butt? Was the next question. <laughs> <laughs> that's not how I phrase that. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's exactly how you phrase it. Is it going to go in my butt? That is exactly how you said it. <laughs> And I said... Maybe do you want it to go in my butt? Is this something that you're planning on putting in my butt? That's, a, that's what yeah. I said just no. now. This is, the, 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 no. yeah. is it going in my butt implies that he's already on board, he's come to grips <laughs> with the fact that it's going in his butt. I don't care about the terminology. But I, <laughs> 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 Technically, 
technical terms. Yeah. Um, but anyways, so I told him no because I wanted it to be an even bigger surprise. Again, lied to my face. It's a funny. Bigger surprise. <laughs> so uh, we go out after we've had this small talk. Like it is, I'm sure at some point it goes to the back of his mind because yep. we've been grocery shopping. But I'm still trying to get him in the mood. So I'm like flirting it up a little bit. Talking about getting home and getting undressed. <laughs> but, <laughs> but as he's like in the shower, you know, getting ready for me. Um, yeah, that's what you do in the shower. Um, I don't even remember taking a shower. For you that did. Anymore. You took. You went and mm-hmm. took a shower, and I set up the room. Uh, Soap is important. I'm not sure if you know that, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm I I'm wearing nice things. I put the cucumber on the bed. I put some lube on the bed. There's a towel ready and some the, condoms. The tube of lube, not just she didn't just yeah, lube up no. the bed. <laughs> Just spells out butt play and lube. <laughs> Next time. Um, but yeah. Slip so, and slide. So it's very obvious, like, my intentions yeah. of where this is going to go. And he comes in the room, and I was like, so here's that thing. And then he automatically was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> See, I had heard a partial. I didn't realize there was all of this prep time leading up to this. Yep. Like, no. the story that I had was framed that. There was just this giant dick-shaped cucumber on the bed with a towel and a lube and some condoms. But it turns out there was a quite a bit of build-up yeah. to this. There, there, were, there was a little bit of four foreplay, <laughs> so it were. Some three-play. Yeah, some three-play <laughs> yeah, to get, get Dave in the mood. And then once Dave was right and ready in the mood, <laughs> then you show him the Hulk's dick. Yeah. So and funny. suddenly, everything goes flaccid. I oh. mean, dark. <laughs> <laughs> but it was so great, because he was like... No, you lied to me. You said it wasn't going to go in my butt. <laughs> and I was like, but babe, I just thought it would be, you know, like a fun thing for us to do. And he was like, okay, I'll do it if it goes in your butt first. And I was like, that's not, that just takes away from me dominating you. That just, that, and then, then I've been dominated. That's not how that works. Um, it actually took me longer to convince him that it was a joke than, to convince, not convinced. than, than to convince so, him that I wanted to well, do Well, listen, this. listen. So I'm just going to go ahead and say this. Based on my knowledge, working in restaurants, you have about four days to put that up somebody's butt before you run out of time. <laughs> Got it. Before it's uh, no longer a viable. Doesn't yeah. So, Is it uh, still good? Nobody right. wants a flaccid cucumber. So you're leaving smart though, because... The way she presented it, she's like, so I was, you know, I was thinking that we could kind of do some stuff. And and I was like, this is where you wanted to start? <laughs> <laughs> like, from, it's like zero to 60, like almost literally. Like, <laughs> so That's... we're going to learn how to drive today. <laughs> Here is a space shuttle. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> and then, and this went on, like she was, she was really like, but I really want to do this. Like I really want to. Why can't? Why won't you do this for me? <laughs> Don't you love me? You know why not? And, then, and I'm like, no, this is not. It's not gonna happen. It's, it's not just the not. Definition and then, of love. and then she goes something like, "I'm just kidding." And I'm like, no, you're not. <laughs> You want that up my ass. Like you you're saying you're kidding now because I I said no. You don't even let me see your butthole, of course I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I knew this wasn't gonna happen. <laughs> you, yeah, Dave, really you wouldn't even let her see your butthole. That is so rude. You could have at least flashed her a brown <laughs> eye or something. No, no, no. So this has been an ongoing thing in our relationship, is that I like I will constantly ask him if I can see his butthole because he's seen mine. He's seen mine. Why can't I see a male butthole? I want to know what the difference is. The, now, fair now, point. That's a double standard, Dave. Hold on, because I've shown it to her several times, but she's not wearing her glasses. <laughs> 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 Damn it, babe! I can't. <laughs> damn it! You put the towel back on. <laughs> That's literally how it goes. Yeah. So do you, I not... mean, do, do do you do you like do like the full you know getting pat down show your butthole, or you just like turn turn a butt cheek, or do you you? No, I did a I did a full show. I was like, look at it, and she's yeah, like, yeah. I don't have my glasses. So I'm like, too bad. And then I go and grab them, and I'm like, fuck! I'm so blind without these. Like, 
this is blurry right here. Like this doesn't become clear to me until it's here. That's yeah. how bad my yeah. vision is. And you don't want to be that close to a butthole when you see it for the first yeah, time. Yeah, I want to see it. <laughs> Okay. You're just gonna have to so, sneak up while he's asleep, you know. Just I've tried. Get in there. Like yeah. I constantly try to put my finger in his. Just not, not, not. Mostly in a joking way. I don't want to put my finger. In mostly his butt. a joking way. Constantly so trying to, to put it. your finger up his butt. <laughs> no, like he'll be like, like God damn it, Dave, stay still. <laughs> like, like he'll be in the kitchen cleaning dishes, and he won't know I'm in the room. So I sneak up and I poke his butt through, like, through his pants, and he'll be like, God fucking damn it, like this all the time. This so happens. you find find his favorite pants and you strategically cut a hole <laughs> my favorite right pants towards the butthole <laughs> my so when you just pants. go in there you just bloop bet you didn't know that was in there oh my god that's genius i don't like how this <laughs> conversation has gone at all <laughs> <laughs> somehow we just got really gravitating towards dave's butthole yeah no <laughs> you're the one who brought up the cucumber i, think I it's did fine. and you should have known that it was going to into your butt i didn't know no. I, you, I mean the conversation, Dave, <laughs> was going into your butt. I, did not, I didn't know she was going to tell the story on the show. I, think I thought so it was just going to be like, oh, that's funny. It's a little dick yeah. cucumber. Now all of your yeah. dirty butthole is aired out oh, for the world hey. to see. Have you ever talked about being karate chopped yet? In no. Book? So, I, are we out of time? Uh, like yeah, whatever. Okay, so I've told my coworker that I would do this like forever ago, and it's been a while since I've been on the show. So mm. um, there was an incident. Like I keep on having incidents at work, and they never really are my fault. It's mm. just the situations around me, like the thing with the milk. I'm sure you were there when I talked about it. How um, there was a chocolate milk jug, and I shook it, and there wasn't a lid on it, so it went. Nope. <laughs> Yeah, I got I, Nickelodeon slimed with chocolate milk. That's yeah. badass. Yeah, but they didn't let me go home, which is kind of dicks. So she was at to work covered in chocolate milk. No, I went to the bathroom. I cleaned up real fast, but I cleaned up good. And then I came back out, and they were just like, wow, you look fine. Go yeah. back to work. Yep. <laughs> I was like, damn it. <laughs> I should have cried. I should have cried. Yeah. <laughs> but there was another thing where I was just, I was just me, you know, enjoying my shift, just walking along. And then out of nowhere, I went, hook up. Got karate chopped in the throat. Yeah, one of the ladies she worked with was like being very expressive with her hands. Yeah, you know, and then people do. And as Jackie's walking past her, she's like, blah, and she's right in the throat. Yeah, almost like, stabbed her with yeah, a pen. It was really great because like I made that noise, like, oh, like <laughs> everybody around was like, oh my god, are and you then, okay? And she did have a pen in her hand, and it had to been like a few inches, I feel, in the closer this way. Like, I would have been stabbed in the throat. Like, how intense the karate chop was. Yeah. Still Yikes. didn't get to go home. Still didn't get to go home. And I think the next move is to chop off a finger or something. Yeah. I mean, or get another job. True. If if you're willing to lose a finger to get out of one day of work, <laughs> <laughs> I think it's time to search right. for yeah. something else. Just my opinion. So, Justin, what did you learn tonight? Um, I learned that Jackie is way more into butt play than Dave is. <laughs> what did you learn, Dave? Uh, I learned that, uh, Jackie is way more into <laughs> <laughs> No cop out. Uh, learn, Jackie Jeff? has no problem telling, uh, intimate bedroom stories on talkie books. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and what did you learn? learn? I learned... Gosh, I don't know. What did I learn today? Stretchy shirts. Stretchy shirts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, big thank you to our uh, our patrons. And if you would like to become a patron of the show and give us some money and get some cool prizes and stuff, you can go to patreon.com slash talkiebox. Uh, you can donate some money and uh, oh, we'll give you ter like shirts and stickers and stuff. Shirts and stickers and stuff, and also the some behind the scenes oh. footage that's a thing. And yep. maybe a mug with a cucumber in it. Yeah, we'll think we, about it. we could auction this cucumber off, and it'll definitely still be good by the time you get it. Yep, and it won't have been in Dave's ass at all. Not, yep. not hardly at all. It's been in the bathroom though. I'll say that. Barely up his ass. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anything else tonight? That's nope. all I got. Nope. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night, everybody.